man. Yo, this is probably the most important question you have to ask yourself before starting 2022. What is crypto anyway? Because you could buy it, you could trade it, you could leverage it, you could build on it, or you can even create on it. All right, so there's many things you could do with crypto, but what is it? I want to have this conversation so that we can be on agreement about how it is that I'm using my time, the most important resource, and my investments, you know, taking my money that I earn with my physical time in the physical realm and transition it onto an investment realm where, once again, your money through tools of finance or systems of finance, ways to leverage your money can help you earn, you know, long-term passive income or cash flow by positioning yourself into the right tokens or opportunities by leveraging what you know about the technologies that are being developed on top of these tokens. And this is where it all starts, guys. Most of us don't really understand what money is. So how can you leverage the financial systems behind it in order to then make the proper decisions to go into quote unquote stocks or in this new ecosystem tokens in order to leverage the technology that you've now learned about. And so that's why I want to have this conversation because it seems like a lot of us are confused because there's many different things that you can do in this new market. The most important thing that we have to understand is that in this new market, you have to see it as two different things. You have the decentralized financial system and the quantum financial system. And these are two different elements of what we're talking about encapsulated into one same term, crypto. Because if we look at cryptocurrencies or crypto technologies as, you know, this, this, this one unit of we're using a term in our language to address what is multiple things. And so this is where the whole idea of, you know, removing the illusion of what you may think it is and giving you an idea of what it actually is may help you. Because unless you're building on it or trying to build on it, then you won't really start putting the pieces together. Because when you look at it as an investor, it's completely different than if you participate in it as a creator. And I want to give you some feedback as a creator of what I've been able to discover in this ecosystem while knowing absolutely nothing about coding at all. And if that helps you out, then hey, you're in the right place. Because remember, cryptocurrencies are going to be the vehicle that the governments and the private institutions and the private corporations are using to basically transition this amount of wealth from a poor store of value money into a brand new store of value, which is now cryptocurrencies. So we want to look at what has been created and the timelines for such, because when you understand that Bitcoin came first as a brand new digital asset, you know, money is, is, is now that new form of where you can store your value. So when you had the market of the real estate crash, so let's look at markets, you had real estate and real estate allowed there to be the insurance market. And then that allowed there to be the healthcare market because healthcare is another market, right? Which then led to life insurance. And so if you're seeing what I'm saying, you have to look at it from people wanted to buy homes. Then people had to protect their homes. So they had to pay a monthly fee for that in order to get a big amount of money in case an accident happened. Well, the same thing relative to your home is your health. And so when we look at things like this, you can see why they are trying to get you to pay money every month in order to be able to have things available to you in case anything happens. But then there had to be stocks, there had to be bonds, and there had to be all these different opportunities for you to enter the market, hence what's called ETFs. And so now we have opportunities because... Remember, the, the money that we originally had, which was, it was gold and dollar. There was a relationship at one point, but then what happened was that there wasn't a connection after the 71 with Nixon. 
So we go ahead and look over here, and we know that Nixon took off the gold in 71, and then in 1980s, it was the International Standards Organization, which essentially helped us expedite the process of what is called a new technological language, which is basically how money, right? It's a new technological language, which is the new way of money, basically digitizing money. This is the process that we've gone through in the last few generations in order to reach what is called the CBDCs. Now, CBDCs are going to be based upon what is called the ISO 222 regulations. And remember, we are not talking about the difference between the communications of data, communications of data. We're talking about the specifics of packaging of data. Because now, we're not just talking about data. We're talking about data plus value. You see, before it was just data. It's encrypted now thanks to what's called layer zero. And so this is where we start to understand the differences between communications and value. Because how we use communications does not mean the same thing for value. So what we had to do is create this entire financial system, which is called crypto, in order to innovate how we communicate and transact value. And this is what most people don't understand, that in this technological advancements that we've been having through what is called being able to send uh, you know, money for us nowadays is different than what it was for people back in the day when they used to have a gold ounce. And so when you used to have a gold ounce, you have to store it somewhere. And so that place where you used to store your gold would charge you a certain amount every single month for you to store it there, right? And so those type of fees are what we're trying to remove, which is the storage fees. And this is why crypto lets you control your own money. So you could become your own bank. And this is the whole point. When you could become your own bank, you got to store, manage, protect. And at the same time, it's one of the an audit. I'm sorry. That was the last thing I wanted to say. You want to audit your own profits or your own bank and your own stores. And you want to make sure that your own bank is being built of the three things. One, it's called a reserve asset. And so you need to make sure that you have reserve assets. Two, you need to have cash flow for the banks back in the day. If they used to store your gold, your valuables, you used to pay them a monthly fee. That's called cash flow. New people signing up every day. That's a cash flow. And then three is your reoccurring incomes, which is your passive income, right? And so these are daily, these are monthly, and this is increase of long term. And so when you want to become your own bank, you really have to start looking at, okay, well, where is the new form of money or where is the new attention for possession. Because remember, there is two things, right? There is long term, which is for society, which is the gold. But short term, we're looking for society. This is long. And this is silver. And these are all the metals, right? This is long term because society cannot build technological advancements if we do not have these metals or these elements that we can leverage to create more technologies. Because remember, we as humans keep creating new markets whenever there's a need to create new money or new wealth or new forms of creating stores of value because an attention and possession are really good, but at the same time, it's what stores value. And so in order to store value, we have to look at it, okay, scarcity, accessibility, decentralization, protection. And so when we look at these things, we have to start realizing that there are certain tokens, right? There's certain tokens that are more important than others because these tokens give you an access to an ecosystem that if you understand how those ecosystems work, you understand what technologies they are working with and what they are trying to do with those technologies or protocols in order for the people
to gain access to become their own bank by these new tools of finance. Because remember, tools of finance is different than money. Tools of finance is how you leverage what it is that you have acquired that as more people drive attention to it, hence Bitcoin, as more people drive attention to it, it becomes a better form of money. But is that the best form of money? Well, as we go into the new world, we want to make sure that we understand what it is that is being done because this is the old world. This is the world of the internet where it was about communication of data and it was about the seven layers of the OSI model where you as the individual using the internet, you're using what is called an HTTP protocol in order to access these websites. But now this whole thing has to be innovated and this is where DAG protocol comes in because this is a layer zero project that's going to re-innovate this whole thing to give us what's called an HGTP so that when you access the internet from the application layer, it is protected. But remember, privacy, communication, this is DAG, and this is ISO. And you need to understand the ISO 222, these are the regulated tokens that will be used in what's called the layer one infrastructure of cryptocurrency. Going back to this big picture, the decentralized financial system and the quantum financial system. ISO has been accepted and regulated by all banks as what's called cross-border payments solution. Now, if you want to make a payment across the world with minimal friction, you're going to go ahead and do this. Remember, these layer one tokens are ISO and those would be what's called XDC, XRP, XLM, IOTA, and ALGO. These are platforms that are layer one that allow you to create through a virtual machine whatever you want. So if we go ahead and create a token on XDC, we would use my contract. This is now the standard. You can launch your own token on my contract through a whitelisted service, which is now becoming the standard across the world through XDC. Or you can use the XRP ledger to create your own tokens on top of that, as many people have done. Or you can also do it on the Algo platform. I don't believe that you can do it on IOTA, but I may be wrong. But IOTA is very similar to BTC in the sense that it is fractionable and you can leverage IOTA in a different way than these other ISO, which I'm going to do a little bit more of a conversation on that on its own. But for right now, going back to why the virtual machines? Well, the virtual machine gives you access to create on top of it, which is what the Federal Reserve is doing in order to be able to then allocate own tokens on top of a layer one. Now, this makes you wonder if the Federal Reserve can allocate their own token on top of a layer one. Well, then what you want to do is, you know, do you want to wait until the CBDCs come out or do you want to get the tokens that are ISO, which the, the Federal Reserve will be trying to leverage to create on top of? Right. And this is the reason why the SEC lawsuit is going on, because they want to give attention and at the same time, confusion, and at the same time, they want to create this fear, right, of what is going on in the background so that that way people can either jump on board or get out. And so what's going on is we want to bring now clarity because as new markets are being created, you need to understand what is going on because, yes, we are talking about a decentralized financial system plus a quantum financial system, which is going to create the new crypto space. And so when you see the new crypto markets being developed, what you also want to look at is that you have what's called NFTs, which provide ownership, or you have what's called DAO, which is called decentralization of a company. And this is where a corporation is decentralized. And so, a corporation is no longer ran by a central party. 
Hence, the opportunity for new worldwide banks to be created is now a possibility because these new worldwide banks are created through these DAO, which are ran by the people, which basically create these reserve assets to solve world problems. And so, once again, you want to look at the big picture because the big picture is that we need to solve world problems by coming together as a world to determine which DAOs are creating projects which are incentivizing you and myself to participate because they will help us get you know, passive income or rewards or a value or a voice in their ecosystem in order to say what happens because voice is equivalent to value. When a token gives you the opportunity to be heard and express your voice, that in itself has more value. Hence, why governance tokens are the new reserve assets of the world. Because if you as an individual, you know, you may see yourself as a small individual not being able to have a big impact in the world. But if you can get yourself a governance token to say and vote on how you want a company or a reserve asset of a DAO to be leveraged, utilized, or innovated upon, then you have a voice in how these ecosystems can develop. And ultimately, that's the real va value of being able to acquire wealth or resources is to be heard. Because if you're not being heard, then you can't really express your opinions to a crowd that would consider your opinion. So then you're just speaking to a wall unless you can get these Governance tokens that give you access to these decentralized autonomous organizations, which would then listen to you. And that's the whole point here, that we want to enter what is called the cryptocurrency space with an awareness of how to become our own bank through a new financial system, because we understand how the new financial system will innovate social supply chain uh, uh, innovation and scale. Because right now we're going through issues in a supply chain. And so what's going to make everything better are these smart contracts, which they're, as it says, smart in the sense of when you automate one thing on one of these, it'll automate across the entire sector of the supply chain. So what this means is that every single participant, every single institution, every single, um, what's it called, market is going to be involved in all of these different transactions. And so... As we go on from what is called a layer one to layer two, we have to realize that all of these automations have to happen through what are called dApps or operating systems for industries. And so this is when you need to understand what are called tokens that give you either governance or tokens that are basically the tokens of a dApp, right? Because if you have like, uh, right now let's talk about Demetria. Right, DMTR is the new operating system for agriculture. And so when all the world's agricultural farms and all of these different places want to improve their agricultural yield, they're going to go ahead and use what's called a DAP created by Demetria, which is basically an app that lets you bring your farm onto the ecosystem and you basically create a parameter about around your ecosystem or your farm. That way you have a perimeter digitally scanned onto the satellites so that that way Demetria through these satellites can help you scan the, the minerals and all the deposits in your farm so that that way they can tell you, hey, look, you are now missing certain minerals in your uh, soil. So therefore you're crop is going to be deficient in certain minerals or its maximum potential is going to be hindered by this percentage. So if you increase certain amount of minerals and they'll give you a list by doing satellite scanning through radar and all these different measurement techniques. So therefore this company is using incredible technology. They created a token. They have created a marketplace and now farmers can go ahead and now enter this ecosystem to produce up to an extra, I believe it was 30% of yield per year. So imagine 
This means that they can make more, produce more, eat more, help more. And all it is because of this company, Demetria, who has been working on this for years in order to improve an entire industry. So remember, there are companies and there are operating systems. And what you need to do when you're entering the brand new ecosystem of what is crypto, you need to put yourself in the position of an investor that understands the difference between how to become your own bank and how to invest in technologies that are innovating the entire world, not just trying to look at charts and make quick profits. Remember, doing your own research, becoming your own bank, and eventually taking ownership of your own wealth is all we're here to do before 2022. And if you're watching this after 2022, well, what you want to know is that these ISO 222 tokens are going live November 2022. And if you don't know about the regulations that were created in 2014, I would suggest you go read the papers. I would suggest you do your own research and you put yourself in a position where you understand the difference between how to leverage your digital assets in order to get loans, in order to get, uh, you know, collateral or lending or, you know, these different APY returns by being able to take your money out of the traditional banking system, introducing it to these new financial systems, and then being able to provide liquidity for these new financial systems. Because essentially you can become the banks and that's what they don't want you to know about, which is why they're keeping your attention focused on Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP so that you don't learn how big the ecosystem really is and you get stuck on these first stage tokens. Remember, these initial tokens allow you to enter different ecosystems, which are where the money is going to flow. And so when you understand governance token versus operating system tokens, then you get to have an idea of how to create a well-balanced portfolio for your bank, which is a reserve asset, something that gives you cash flows. And I would say that that's called a strong node and then passive income. I would say anything that's built on the XDC network, any node built on the XDC network will be your best bet because then you're buying passive income with absolutely no gas fees. Then you're buying cash flow where you're earning money each day. And then you're also increasing your average value or your, your yearly value by increasing your reserve assets. Look, knowing where the attention is going, because remember, attention drives the markets. So if you remember that homes lead to a better health and your health leads to better investments and your investments lead to the crypto market and the crypto market leads into either A, which is NFTs or B, DAOs. And this is where most people's attention is at. Few people are thinking of how to build. And that is where I want to go ahead and drive you because all of us are creators and you need to give yourself the chance to create. But first, you need to break away from the traditional financial system and you need to become your own bank by learning how to structure yourself in such a way so that then you can come over and build, create and free yourself by waking up daily with purpose because that's all we're here to do, to create, to share experiences, to help each other get out of pain, to solve each other's problems, and to collaborate with each other. Because at the end of the day, we're here to help each other. If you have any questions, make sure you comment down below and let me know. I look forward to seeing you on the next one.